This is not a clickbait. This is a true story. If it weren't for this particular tool I'm gonna to show you in this video, I wouldn't have been able to create the kind of look that I went for and the things that I did for this Universal Studios commercial. And calm down notes, I'm not gonna be talking about my tools. This is something that is available inside DaVinci Resolve. So you guys will have access to it when you're watching it and you can implement what I'm doing right away. And you know what else you guys have access to? My absolutely free training. Every single thing in there is based off of what you guys have been asking me for the last five years. So it just went all in there in a one hour long jam packed training that will absolutely level you up in one hour. It comes with practice footage. So you can actually put everything that you learn in that training to test. So all you gotta do is just click the link in the description to sign up for the training. Obviously do it after you finish watching this video. For those that don't know me, my name is Kazi. I've worked with brands like Adidas, Amazon Prime, Universal Studios, and I make no just straightforward color grading tutorials so you can work with your dream clients. All right, so now we're in Resolve. By the time this video comes out, the commercial might not be live, but it will go up very soon. I picked out these shots where the tool was used. So, I mean, this is our Rec. 709 on all of these shots, right? These were a little underexposed. And then this is what we ended up creating. Uh, so we're having a lot of fun with it. We went places with this ad, but the one thing that I needed to do, it had to be done in such a surgical way that it usually, in the past, you would send that stuff out to VFX and then they would touch it. It would spike the cost of post-production by so much and then it would come back to you um, and then you would finish it as a colorist. And then there's sometimes back and forth because they did something where now there's a color shift and now you're talking to them back and forth and they might be in a different time zone. And trust me, been through all of it. And it's just based on real life experience that I'm sharing with you. So here, it is absolutely baffling that now we have this available in the color page and it's just so simple that even somebody who is as stupid as me when it comes to visual effects can do this. So I'm talking about this. Like when I graded this shot, the one thing that I wanted to put emphasis on was this bus, but I couldn't do it. So if I go here and turn this off and if I play it through, you can see like it just kind of blends in and doesn't really pop out. And I wanted to grab it and give it like this additional contrast that I ended up creating by using my gamma and gain, okay? And that was possible using Magic Mask. And now look at the shape that I created. I mean, not I created, I just like did this, it's Resolve. Resolve is using AI, Magic Mask is driven by AI and it just, latches on to anything that you give it. And it just does such a wonderful job. I mean, this is mind boggling. Usually if you were to track a shape like this, first of all, it's gonna be impossible. You're gonna be creating a custom shape with like hundred different points. And then you're going to be manually going in there and keeping it clean. And then especially when your image goes out of frame, it's going to throw it off. And then you have to go create manual points to like latch it on. But in this case, I just, did a simple shape, ran it, and then set it to better, all of us set it to better, and then we ended up with this. And then we can just come out of it and do whatever we wanna do to it. So if I were to go here, even if we were to just like redo it, like try it, I can just kill it, right? So like now it's gone. All I did is like something like this, right? And look at this, it just, what? It just grabbed the entire thing. And then I just go and set it to better, and then I just say, go ahead and track it. And like now it just happened right in front of you guys. And it just did it. And it, it's impeccable. Like with what we want to do, it like absolutely crushes it. And it's just that simple. Like I said, I mean, this would have been a VFX job before. Now I want to show you this shot right here, which is so much more involved. So we have this. And if I show you Rec. 709, he is obviously like underexposed because he's backlit. And then when we go here, what do we do with him? So if I go before I added magic mask, it was like this, right? It's okay, but it's not the same as this. Like now we just brought him out so much and we're using our gamma, we're using our gain, our lift, we're adding some more warmth into 
his skin tones, all of that is done. But just like, look at how crazy this is. Like, look at the detail around his hair. Like, are you freaking kidding me? You think this could be done using just a regular oval shape and then tracking it? Absolutely impossible. So again, you would be sending it to visual effects to get that done. And it's just that simple. I mean, again, we can just get rid of it. And all I have to do is just do this. And then I can just go to minus and then unselect this, unselect that, and then say, make it better. And just look at this. And now I can go, now track all of this. Like this is happening right before you guys. So it's like, what? It, it is absolute, like I said, I mean, I just, I don't know. I don't know. This is so crazy. I mean, I've been using Magic Mask for so long, especially when you're working on a job and you have to like move quickly. I just remember back in the day creating custom shapes. And it's not like we didn't do that back in the day, but like it had to be done in such a tedious manner. And like I said, most of the time it went out to VFX and then it came back from them and it just added so much time, so much frustration, so much money, all of the above. Moving on to this shot right here, I have actually now multiple magic masks going on. So I have a magic mask for her and it's just so beautiful. Like, I mean, look at this. So that like just adds warmth to her skin and contrast and just pops her out so nicely and naturally. Then I have one for my homie right here. So that brings him out a little bit. And then I have one for her and just how beautiful her skin already is. It just makes it that much uh, better and pronounced. Like, look at this. Wow. And now if we just take these three and we do on and off, it's like, you know, because if you're creating shapes and if you have multiple shapes going on on the same one, then like all the changes that you're making are global changes. And if you're creating multiple shapes, again, when it's going in and out of frame and when it's like moving like this, like look at all of this, it's going to throw it off. It's going to throw it off because right now they're going to go off screen, right? So if I were to do this and show you what's happening, oh, come on, forget about it. Like how it's latching on and even adding the blur and moving with it. I mean, forget about it. Like it just would be impossible. So like, let's go look at this one now. Because this is even more difficult because he's coming in from off screen to on screen and then we're moving. And then what's happening with her? Like, look at this. Guys, I'm telling you, it, it just get on it, use it um, and don't overthink it. A lot of uh, the times with Magic Mask, people either overdo it or don't do it enough. They just go and try the the harder parts and the do it the more difficult way. Like, no, go practice, go play with it. Why am I doing this? Because somebody might be asking, why aren't you going to face and then selecting individually like face and then track it? That's because when you read the actual documentation from Resolve, they prefer for you to just keep everything in this setting and then just use a simple stroke and then just go from there. They said like, you know, this will get you the best results. So if you don't have to make it complicated, don't make it complicated. That's just a simple rule I live by. This one was uh, in all fairness, was not done for the ad because we kept him in this because that's the same dude. So we didn't change his jacket, but this is just to kind of give you an example of something that's very complicated, like super, super complicated, because like you can see this is coming through from the edges and then that part right here. So like it has to do a pretty good job. And then even like the, these blurred edges, like try creating this shape, try creating this shape with custom curves uh, or with custom uh, window and like see how well it's going to latch on. I mean, it's just. It, it's not going to happen. So again, this is going to go to VFX and then it's going to get done. It's going to come back and then you're going to do whatever you need to do. But here we can just do whatever we want. I mean, like, look at this. Like wherever we want to go, we just can do it before and after. I mean, come on, right? Like, I mean, go here and now play it through. It's, it's going to latch on. Like it's absolutely mind-bendingly good. And again, keep it simple. Don't pick jacket. Don't pick a person. Just keep it simple. If the simple doesn't work, then go ahead and change it. And then in this one, 
Um, this A lot of people are going to like how I'm using it here. So client came back and said, um, we want to put more emphasis on universal. This is what I gave them. And they came back and they said like, hey, on the universal globe in the back, we want to make it pop. So then what I did in this situation is I went ahead and created a window and tracked it. So the window is tracked. That's amazing. But when I brought it up and made modifications in my HDR panel, HDR uh, palette, I just went and brought it up by uh, three quarters of a stop. When I did that, it like made him blow out and like his skin tones look so weird and it just threw off the entire thing. So then what I did is I went in here and I basically did this. I just tracked him. I just went ahead and tracked him, right? And then once I tracked him, I went in here and I just inverted it. So first of all, let's make it better. So let's go ahead and just do it again. So that's what we got. I tracked him and then I went ahead and I just flipped it. Boom. So it's like I just inverted it and then we already have a custom shape around it. So like there's a lot going on here, right? So I have a custom shape. I'm bringing it up, lifting it by three quarters of a stop. Then I'm going in my magic mask, tracking him, doing the reverse thing and then flipping it so we can only affect the background. And then when we come out, we end up with this result and like, look at how clean and perfect this is and it's gonna latch on perfectly. So that's how it was used in this particular shot. So there you have it. I mean, I just wanted to give you multiple different scenarios on how you would use Magic Mask on a professional level when you are turning and burning without sacrificing the quality and also saving your client tens of thousands of dollars. VFX is super, super expensive. So between the time that it's gonna take to do back and forth and the money that's involved, you can basically save your client all that money and then it will make it that much easier for you to then ask for maybe $1,500 more next time or $2,500 more next time. They're not even gonna worry about it because they're gonna be like, now we don't have to go through VFX for all these small things our colorists can handle it. If you enjoyed this video, then do me a favor, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, and make sure to share this video with your filmmaker friend. If you have any content suggestions, drop them in the comment section below. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace, fam.